In this video we're going to look at entering a booking into REI Masters booking grid. You've got two ways of doing this. One is to go up to the top left here, select the create new and select one of your options here. If you do select the new booking option in this way, you will need to enter in all of the information including arrival and departure dates and the property or room type that you require. I'm going to show you another way of entering the booking into the bookings grid. If you know or can see space in a particular room for specific dates, you can do a drag and click option or click and drag option in here. I'm just going to advance it a little further along by using the scroll bar at the bottom. And I'm going to enter a booking into this particular room here, 1228 Scott. And by clicking on the date that I want it to start, and then dragging across you will see the little bubble indicates to me the from and to or arrival and departure dates in the little bubble there. It also then includes the number of nights that I've indicated. When I release my mouse button there it will then pop up with the new booking information and what it'll already have inserted for me is the arrival and departure dates including the number of nights and I've already got the property type and room selected on the right hand side here. Over on the left hand side I then start to enter in the details that I require. Now I can again either start to enter information surname, first name, salutation, company, contact details for my guest or I can use the return guest information as well. And by clicking this one here I can then scroll down and see a list of prior guests as a return guest. I'm just going to pick up this particular couple here or family. By clicking on that one I can click select or if I double click on the line there it will then drop in that information that relates to that guest there. Okay, So I've got my surname, first name, contact um, information there, postal address, phone numbers, email address etc. What I've also got of course is credit card details that the guest gave me previously. So what I'm doing with this one here is I'm identifying a prior guest and really just confirming the current information that I've got on screen. Over on the right hand side as I mentioned we've already got an indication of the arrival and departure dates. I would select the appropriate agent by using the drop down list there. By default it's going to expect that it's a direct booking. I can select of course one of the respective agents that show in the list there. I can select the region that the guest comes from. In this case here they come from Western Australia so we can select that option there. And our booking source, I how we the, the guest came to us, again we can look at that one there and we've got our option for return guest which we'll insert. So again we've got the property or, and room type selected there. I can then insert the correct number of guests. If I want to I can hide the tariff that I'm about to arrange or insert in here from the guest registration form. Not too worried about that one at the moment but it is an option available for you of course. I then need to select the rate based on the stay dates of course and the number of nights and the room type that the guest has there. So underneath the select rate option what it will give me of course is rates that are reflective of a two bed apartment. Okay. If I just pull this down a little bit we can see the guest is staying seven nights. So in my case here I want a two bed unit or two bed apartment for seven nights select that one there and what we can also see is it gives me an indication of the tariff amount there. So I select that one and there we have an indication of the tariff available for this guest stay in that room type for the stay dates available. We also see at the bottom here that this is a return guest with two previous stays. When I select my save changes on there to insert that booking information I also then get at the bottom of the screen here the insertion or the record created date and the last modified date and time as well. Okay. Because this is a guest with previous stay information, I'm just going to jump to this last tab here, the history tab. This now gives us an indication of the prior stays that this guest had. So we can see here the status of the booking, the arrival and departure dates, the number of nights, which property they stayed in. Again, if I click on here, it will give me a bit of extra information, either the rate that was used on this one, any comments that may relate to their previous stay. So this is a good way of identifying 
different rooms. You might see that the guest likes to stay in a particular room. Very helpful when you're inserting a new booking for your return guest. Just pop back into this one here and we'll start to work our way along on the information here. The additional guest information, this one here, what you'll see is it shows you all of the guest information as it relates in the booking detail there. But what it allows you to do is to add further guest contact information into this one here. Now I'll show you how this works on a different booking. Let's just keep going forward with the other information or the other tabs that show here. The additional booking information is in regards to further requests or comments, either guest request comments which will appear on their statement or manager comments that you can insert into the system there. Your account tab, this here then shows the outstanding amounts, in particular here we've got accommodation outstanding or a debit of accommodation $1420. From here you can then receipt a deposit against this booking or you can charge further items to this guest that would need to be paid by them. Interfaces here, if you have interfaces linked up such as your PABX or movies, or you've got a point of sale system linked, if you've got a restaurant as part of your resort, that information can be inserted in here. Housekeeping, this one here shows you then other information that relates to housekeeping. If there's a comment, got an extra uh, comment in here about extra bed that would need to be made up if the guests exceed four people, this one being a two bed booking of course. And what we also see then in here is the housekeeping items. So on arrival date, there's an arrival check to be done. No charge for that one, just part of confirming that the room is available ready for a guest. The other two items are our depart clean and depart linen and they are then identified for the departure date. So when the guest checks out, these are the housekeeping items that need to be completed. Our tasks and notes tab, this allows us here to insert a various a number of tasks or notes. Under the add new drop down list here you can see the other options that are available in here to link to the guest booking there. So if I just close this particular booking now, we can see now that Burke booking has been inserted here on the grid in room 1228 Scott Street from the 2nd of October through to the 9th of October. We've got that available to us now. So I'm just going to pop back in here and just show you a different booking where I can identify extra guest or different guest portfolio information. If I just jump into this Howden Fans one here, and we go to the additional guest information. This particular booking was made under a company name, so Howden Fans. It actually has a number of people staying. It's a townhouse that this guest has particularly booked. So I've added guest folios in here to be the different individuals who are staying in the property there and then their contact information. So it's a company booking but I've got guest folio information of different guests who are staying in there. So a great way of identifying or putting extra information in on the booking that relates to the individual guests that make up the group there. To add a folio or a guest folio of information you literally just click on the add guest folio you can either search from a list of contacts, i.e. prior guest information. If I say yes, it brings me a list of ones that I can select from, of course. If I go to add a guest folio and say no to the list of contacts, it just brings me a blank screen here, ready for me to insert the extra information as I need. So add that in there. Of course, add in all the other valid information as you go save your changes on there and what I now have is an additional insertion of a guest folio in there and if I have a look under the drop down list I've now got the four that I can select from. Of course from Mr Garfield here I want to add in further information for him linked to that Howden fans booking.